the Army. Army has uh, trucks one quarter ton, four by fours, 1,020. Marine unit has 592. Okay. You start wherever you okay. feel like starting, my friend. You don't have to look at the camera. You don't have to do any of that. Just whatever you're comfortable with. Talk about whatever you want to talk about and start wherever you want to start. This is uh, May 18, 2017, Army Chosen Few Reunion in Springfield, Missouri. This is Ray Vallow, 57th Field Artillery Headquarters Battalion. And he was handling the wires and the switchboard at the punch bowl. Did I say that correctly? No, I had it chosen. <laughs> well, I know, but you had that little punch bowl. You called, what'd you yeah, call it? Yeah, it, it, well, that bowl we were in. Yeah, the bowl. The press bowl, yeah. Down there in that bowl area, which we shouldn't have been in, but. Okay. Yeah, I pretty well got these straightened out with Ron. Ron's got good here. And, uh... Okay, so we start off here with uh, uh, Operation Order 20, or Order 6. Okay. Six is on, this was on 11, 11th of November. All right. So 14 days later, th this was where, where we're at now. This was our, our regions, the, the areas we were in. In other words, 1st Marine Division, advance and destroy enemy in zone, prepare for offensive, operation order, west of Ham Hung, uh, Sagachanee, Axis on order. Establish blocking blocking positions NXG and uh, protect Tenth Corps left flank in zone. Okay, the third third United States Infantry Regiment or division uh, relieve uh, relieve elements first United States Marine Division in zone by 12 2400 November. Secure the Wonsan area, destroy enemy in zone, establish building uh, uh, battalion blocking posi uh, positions, Annex C, and protect uh, 10th Corps left flank in zone. Prepare for offensive operations of the uh, uh, Yong Hong uh, Ha Bong Asan. Knee axis. Uh, prepare one infantry. Provide one infantry in uh, as air, as corps uh, reserve at Ham Hung. Okay, Seventh Infantry Division. Advance. Destroy in, uh, destroy enemy in zone. Prepare to move one one regimental combat team assembly area in Ham Hung. On core, core, core reserve on order. Okay, so so that stands for 14 days. That starts on December 3rd. 14 days, 11th, 11th of November. 11th November. So that stands for 14 days, or uh, but with 14 days before any action is going to re really uh, replace it by Operation Order Seven. That would be this map here, 11th of November. Okay, so uh, then we go to, uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, 10th Corps is active on making plans. Okay. So we got here a top secret document, 10th Corps Operation Plan 8, Draft 3, dated 22 November, and so it's going to say here that, uh, Okay, uh, I Corps operate from Pung uh, San, Hapsu, and Kenchu area to destroy enemy in zone. First Marine Division, United States Marine Division, one, advance, seize, and secure Mepchong Ni. Two, prepare to advance north on Mepchong Ni, Chikang Ji, Ha Chong axis on 10th Corps order. C, United, 3rd United States Infantry Division, gain and maintain contract right flank of 8th Army. Prepare to attack west on Haksu Ri, uh, 
knee axis, prepare to to uh, support First Marine Division. Uh, prepare, uh, prepare, ass assume operation control, First Korean Marine Corps Regiment, and secure the Wonsan area, all on Corps orders. So to provide one regimental combat team on Corps Reserve at Hamsu, uh, Hungnam, Hungnam, and uh, Sudong area. Okay, 7th Infantry Division. Advance, destroy enemy in zone. Employ not to exceed one regimental combat team on the Hegaru Changjin axis and secure the function area. Okay. So, so that was on the 22nd. So then on uh, 10th Corps again, having things, trying to make things work is on the 24th of November. Annex B, Int Intelligence to Operation Order 7. This is essential, essential elements of, of information. The important part is down at the bottom where I have marked that with uh, any anything up and coming is to be reported intelligence mission to subordinate and adjacent commands. A, one regimental corps, see paragraph 3X, 1st Marine Division and 7th Division will, one, report any evidence of any attempt of the enemy to establish strong defensive positions, including entre entrenchment, obstacles, uh, wire entanglements, and pillboxes. Report any evidence on the part of the enemy forces to staunchly defend by fire or counterattack. So, so this is this is related to uh, that upcoming uh, Medal of Honor for on on the Marine side for Frank Mitchell. Frank Mitchell of a, of a battle, a noted battle on the 26th. Yeah, in our platoon south of Tong Tong Pass. Yeah, that they were they were required to report this to uh, 10th Corps. That's a major battle as far as uh, reporting. But at that point, though, the. Uh, British Royal Marines were supposed to be the INR group along that area, were well, they not? Well, uh, not yet. Not yet? Yeah, but, but they're in the mix. They're in the mix somewhere Okay, here. just be the clear. Yeah. So, so then we go to Operation Order 7. This is, this is secret. 10th Corps, and this is the 2025, 2400, November 50. So this is the day after this one. Okay, we got here now. The new mission is ta uh, Task Organization Annex A, Intel Estimate and Plans uh, Annex B, uh, 10th Corps Attack uh, 2700, November, to sever enemy uh, line of communications at Mepyong Ni and destroy enemy in zone in the northern boundary of Korea. Along the Yellow River, at the left to the mouth of the two Tuman River on the right. So, okay, 1st Marine Division attack at 270800 November, seizes Mepyong Ni, advance to Yellow River, destroys enemy in zone. 7th Infantry Division attack north on 270100 November from Chosen Reservoir, advance to the Yellow River. Destroy enemy in zone. Secure Pungsen uh, area. Uh, coordinate operations with I one with a uh, one I with I core. Rock core. I rock core. Yeah, I rock, rock core. Yeah. Defend a Yellow River line in zone. Advance from Hapsu and uh, Chongjin areas. Destroy enemy in zone in northern boundary. Of Korea. Okay, there, there's five things here for the for the third the third infantry. But anyway, th this one here now is going to be the one. Well, I superseded this one. This this one should have following the 24th. This uh, this is uh, the result of the meeting with Colonel Childs to uh, General MacArthur. 
when he flew over for that one day. Yeah, he, he sent over. He sent over with this one from the from the. Well, actually, this one for the twenty second. For the twenty second is uh, the one he's taking over to, to for MacArthur, and that's the one that it says the first Marines will seize Mapyongni, and then uh, the Seven Division advance destroy enemy zone, not to exceed one regimental combat team on. Hagaru on the Changjin axis. Okay, so now coming from MacArthur, coming from MacArthur will be a, a reply. here. Will be the reply of a top secret document on this uh, CX six nine six six one. It will be sent over to Alman. So, in other words, this this one is that uh, top secret one that, that uh, the face to face meeting with Childs and MacArthur. This one. Okay. So, so this will be uh, this will be the message is in three parts. Part one. 10th Corps Operation Plan 8, number 8, draft number 3, as discussed at GHQ, this date will be implemented at the earliest practical date. D-Day to be detained, determined by the 10th Corps Commander. Uh, part 2, effective on day D-Day, the boundary line between 8th Army and 10th Corps will be as follows. No change in present boundary lines from uh, sin up CV 1120 and B. Now this is a numerous things here. Uh, it, it's hard to read because it, it's blurred out. But it, in other words, there's a lot of other lines are going to shift. Okay. On, on the second one, which mainly, mainly the big one is the Seventh Division will shift over and take assume. The east side of the reservoir. East side of Chosen. East side of Chosen Reservoir. So the 5th Marines will move out under Murray. Yeah. Head west to Udomni. They're supposed to release on the 24th, 5th, or 6th? The 25th. 25th. And so uh, part three is 10th Corps, 10th Corps, uh, let's see, 10th Corps plan for this will be discussed with Army 8 staff by visitors repre visiting representations on the 24th of November. It's right after uh, In other words, MacArthur flew to see Walker. Notify Walker. You will, they will notify Walker. Now that's, that's what everyone says in their books, that there was only one minor change of, of this operation order that Childs brought over to him. The only change is one by one change is the boundary line where Walker is to remove his line below Mepyongni. To so raise it from the Yalu down to below. Yeah, every everybody everybody is, is agreed. That's what all the the writers before talk about this top secret document. Okay. I'll get that on film so they can see it. You can keep going, Ray. I'm keeping up. Well, now, now, then. So now we have to go back to the document that exists. I had this one uh, pre preempted. This one, put this one. We got to go back to this. Operate now. Everything is under Operation Order Seven at 25, 2400 of November. Everything changes, but we got to go back to what it says about. The, okay, the, the, the distribution here, the 1st Marines, 1st United, United States Marine Division, attack at 2700, 0800 November, seizes Mepyongni, advance to the Yellow River, destroy enemy in zone. 7th Infantry Division, attack north at 2700, 0100 November, 
from Changyun Reservoir, advanced to the Yellow River, destroy enemy and zone, secure the Pungsan area, coordinating operations with I Corps, with I Rock, first I Rock Corps, darn it, Rock Corps. Okay, so, so the difference here is the Marines will still take Mepyongni, and the 7th Division is not stated as doing anything of taking Chang Jin or even advancing to Chang Jin. So, but there, there is no mention of the 7th Division restricted to not to exceed one regimental combat team. Right. On here, it's gone. And it doesn't, it, it does not say what we will secure once we get on the east side of the reservoir. But this is Operation Order 7, which will place in effect the, uh, the, the 7th Division Order, Operation Order 25, will be under this division. That's a periodic, uh, that, that's really a request. So, so okay, then, then we'll go into, uh, on the 24th, you got an opposite page there too. There's a flip over side there. Yeah, well, that's that's that one I thought I told you about. That other one that was. Well, I got one one in front of this. That's not a thirty. I want. Oh, I'm on twenty four. Okay, this one. Okay, then we go to seventh division. Seventh division operation order twenty four. And this is dated 24, 2400 November. It's from Untak, Korea. Okay, it has here number one. Uh, A is omitted, and B is omitted. Whatever is supposed to be here from the from the seventh division is omitted. Omitted. So we got A, two, thirty regimental combat team thirty one minus moves at 25,800, November 50, to assembly area via railroad station. Pukchong, at Pukchong. Prepare for further movements to south and west by railroad and motors. One, Annex 1 is the road overlay. Annex 2 is the march table. 3A, 1st Battalion, continue present mission. 2, 2nd Battalion, attached 2nd Battalion, uh, Heavy Martyr Company, 31st Infantry, continue present mission. 3C, uh, 3B, attached uh, HV Mortar Company, minus 31st Infantry, co uh, collection if plat, plat minus medical company, 31st Infantry, INR platoon, uh, AT and, and M platoon, move to assembly area via Puk Chong, exhibit uh, Annex 2 March Table, 57th Bata Field Artillery Battalion, less C battery, uh, attached 15 AAA Battalion, D battery, move to assembly area via Puk Chong, Annex 2, March Table, uh, Heavy Tank Company, 31st Infantry, uh, move to assembly area via Puk Chong, Annex 2, March Table, F, uh, Med Company, for 31st Infantry, 1, Collection, uh, wait, wait, wait. Platoon, protection, collection, platoon attached to 3rd Battalion, moved to area, assembly area of vicinity of Puk Chong, Exhibit 2, March Table. 2, a company minus continues mission. G, a heavy martyr company, uh, 31st Infantry. 1, company minus moves to assembly area via Puk Chong, Annex 2, March Table. 2, 2nd Battalion attached to the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Platoon attached to the 2nd Battalion, 
B. INR platoon attached to the 3rd Battalion. 1. Company, company C, 13th Engineers, uh, C bat Battalion, facilitate move on RCT by work on the main supply route. AT&T, AT&M, AT&M uh, platoon attached to 3rd Battalion. X. 1. Halts 15 minutes on odd hour starting at 0900. Noon meal halt from 1300 to 1400. 2. Rate of march as dictated by road conditions. Administrative details later as announced. 5A is NC. Uh, B is uh, 31st, 2, 1, 31st Regimental uh, CP forward in column at rear of 57th Field Artillery Battalion, 2, 31st RCT, 31st CP rear present location, and three other reports after reaching Puck Chong. Okay, then we got to here as uh, Operation Order 20. This is uh, this was uh, 23. That's 24. Wait a minute. Hold up a minute. Let's see which one I got here. That was 24. Okay, I missed 23. Well, no, this is part of 23. This is part of 23. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I missed 23, because 24, 24 is the March table. Okay, so this is a, a second page, second page of, of the March table would be Annex, Annex 2, March table of Operation Order 24. So is, in other words, a major storm, one, major storms, that we've got a serial number, uh, organization and commander, number of vehicles, uh, cross area initial point, and remarks. So we got number one is major storms, number of vehicles 120, cross initial point at 0800, remarks, organic vehicles plus 25 <coughs> personnel uh, carriers, that's uh, two and one half ton. Okay, number two is 57, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Embry, 80, 88 vehicles, cross initial point at 0800, leave service, uh, less service battery. Number three is Colonel McLean, <coughs> command group, 13 vehicles, uh, cross initial point at 0945, remarks time of subject to change. Four, <coughs> Captain Drake, uh, Heavy Tank Company, 1st, uh, 31st Infantry, 31st, four vehicles, <coughs> uh, departs present location 15 minutes after 57 field artillery clears. <coughs> uh, Captain Hepner, uh, service battery, uh, 57th Field Artillery Battalion, uh, 19 vehicles, leaves at the cross point 12 o'clock. Uh, number six at Major Couch, uh, 3rd Battalion Elements, uh, number of vehicles 20, cross initial point at 1400 hours, 7th Division Quartermaster Trucks, time subject to change. And that's signed by that's for McLean, Colonel McLean. Okay, can I see that map for a second? Map. Yeah, that's this more. This kind of kind of shows how they're moving, where they're located, how they're getting around. So in this corner yeah, we have. Uh, this is this is part of the overlay too. Then this. Corner. Yeah, this thirty-first up here, tank. I'll show you the map, then may I let you just kind of describe who's what and where. Well, that is the, the first point. The farthest point here is the 31st is operating 
to the e to the east of the Fusen Reservoir. Right. It's approximately 20 air miles as a crow would fly over to the east of Chosen Reservoir. Okay. And it shows a line of uh, arrows coming from the 332nd uh, 7th Division headquarters at the schoolhouse should be at Untop. The arrows will leave from the, from the schoolhouse over to pick up 31st, 31st Regiment at the Fusan Reservoir, on the east side of the Fusan Reservoir, continue on down to Corey, C-H-O-R-E, down, downward, there's a key point, downward to another area, the other road would, which go off to the, to the right to Ewan, where we originally landed. Yeah. On the 29th. So you're going to go south of that? Then we will continue south of that to Puk Chong, the railroad station, near the railroad station. But you won't use the station? You won't mount on trains at that point? or you Well, won't? it says further instructions will be given at the, at the train station. Okay. In other words, some, some probably ammunition will go by train. Because right. that's going to be heavy weighted. Because I know the uh, the company C that you all were talking about had 105 or 155 howitzers or whatever. When they got down to Puk Chong, they loaded them on the train to eat back out. Yeah. They had to build ramps to get them on the trains themselves. Yeah. So I imagine it was pretty limited what you could get on board and what you couldn't. Yeah, but, but all instructions, like the further instructions will be there, but there's none written. You know, like none written on what, on what we wrote, because it's followed by to Order 25 then. Right, so it and seems like somebody... Other, this other one is a continuation here, of down here at T, but that's uh, that's something coming in from... Uh, I'm not sure where... So what, what date and time do you find yourself at Puk Chong? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, it should be the next morning. Oh, I mean, actual date for the camera. Symbol. Date for the camera. Uh, the uh, that should be uh, the 26th. <coughs> okay. Just trying to get a, a, a time frame of movement, mileage covered, that kind of thing. Because, well, the 20, 26th, I, I know, well, it'd be early 26th because the, the 31st would already be out there and be through. But they're going by truck. Right. They got the 120 guys. So they're going to get the men over there first. Yeah. So I don't. I think think it, that's probably the instruction that would be given at Puck Chong would probably be keep your motor, keep going, keep you going, know, just like when they, when they. But we've got to remember that uh, Faith is already moving over there. Right. See, he's grabbed on the twenty at oh nine hundred on the twenty fourth, and he's already. He should be over by the time we're. Yeah, he's way ahead of you. By the time we were there, he should be a chosen. Yeah, he's way ahead of you guys. Yeah. He was at... Because, uh, see, this this is all... Uh, see, he's not under here at the time. Because, apparently, McLean knows, <clears throat> knows he will be assigned to him. But he's still under the 32nd Regiment and under their rules, you know, under their... Uh, so RCT-31 is still being built at this point? Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're just in the making. Okay. So, uh, and th this is what it gets over for Faith is going to be whatever battalion he's already got on the road. It's just to reroute them. Uh, you don't have to read every line on that, but I definitely make sure you cover everything that's highly Yeah, important. but I want to, th then we go into Order 25. This is the one. Th this is the big one. This, this is the one where the bombshell is. All right, now, to put, before we get into that, to put that in perspective, Operation Order 7 is in play. In play. And draft orders and everything else that led up to that point in this time frame is built on an expected attack point on the 25th, which got moved back to the 27th. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, the, the attack point is still the 27th. Okay. Now, so, so the thing The launching is, point. So, so the a lock in a time on this order, because there's two two distinct things there. Because when you get to the intel summary, number one A, it, the intel summary, which there is no summaries. Mm -hmm. This is there's a place for them, but there is none. 
So B is the 7th Infantry Division will attack at 727-0800 November, seizes Mepyongni and advance to the Yellow River and destroy enemy in zone, secures the Pugson area. Now we know later that the Pugson area, that's minus an N, that's a typo, supposed to be the Pugson area. So number two is what the regiment is going to do. Now mind you, we're already under the impression at this point that the Marines have this layout of what they've got to do and what the Army's supposed to do, but Except You've got Marines division. in the way. It's divi yeah, it's div you got to go through the division part, which division part to get where they're at. Okay. So in other words, uh, it says they're now on two. It says A, the re Regimental Combat Team 31 attacks without delay. Which means right now. Yeah, but, but, but apparently, so the 7th Division is already, now we're not there yet, so we're a day late. Yes. This is going to be late because McLean has to offset it to the 28th. So this thing without delay is going to be, there is a delay because he's waiting for the 57th and the, and the tanks to show up. Right. In the so, meantime, you've got the 5th Marine still in your position. Yeah. As you're coming in, they're yeah. still sitting there and they should have been gone two days ago. Yeah. Two, two battalions of Marines are there occupying spaces that we're supposed to have right. to move in these areas. And Murray had already sent one group of his, the two, second. one he third of his. second battalion over to you, nominee. But he still has two of them still sitting there when you all pull in on the 27th. Yeah. Which locked you at Hagaru at 12 o'clock as Murray's 5th is moving through Hagaru on yeah. 12 o'clock. Right. So we got Marines crossing through the Army mm -hmm. trying to do this transition but thing the, the for the 27th. The, the Marines were at, at least totally, they, they were supposed to leave at uh, on the 25th at noon. Right. That severed their, their uh, connection to the east side. Correct. Whoever was there, Faith was there, we know, uh, at that time. And they, and like I said, uh, in policy and direction is, uh, that satisfied the order. As far as Barr, General Barr said, that satisfied the, the order when Faith showed up. Right. So, so then we go on to what, what the rest of it is. But the 2nd Battalion attacks without delay from a chosen reservoir, seizes objectives A, B, C, D, and E, prepares to continue attack to Changjin, and attack to the Yellow River. Now, the point is, you, you would, it's assumed that attack to the Yellow River is going to be straight up. Because Mossman is talking about, we are going to assume the the positions, uh, the, you know, the the positions of attack previously assigned to the Marines, yeah. which means straight up we're going up like the Lin Chang and the Singal Pajin. At least that's what everybody thought. Huh? At least that's what they thought. Yeah. So, so that that's more or less the bombshell. And then the other one is about uh, Rasula's correction of Pungson, that he wrote the article. He wrote the article 25. Well, read, the, read the entire order completely on the t Operation Order 25. Mm. 25 is, uh, okay, it's... Uh, Start with division and come down. Okay, we got here uh, uh, Annex 1, uh, Operation Overlay, uh, uh, number 3. E, 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry, secure, seize and secure Operation Objective B without delay, which is taken care of by Faith. Faith moved up to uh, where the 2nd Battalion moved out right. the, of the 5th Marine. 2, be prepared <coughs> to uh, be prepared to seize objectives uh, C, uh, uh, C, B, uh, is, uh, E on order, uh, I think that, yeah, it's hard to read, that's kind of blurred out, but I think it's C, D. Uh, three, outpost without delay, objective C. B, 
3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, seize and secure objective, which is marked out. It looks like the B is marked A without the A. There is a discrepancy there or a mark through it. 2. Be prepared to seize objective uh, D and, and E on order. 3. Protect uh, Regimental Combat Team 1 right flank. Uh, 2. Uh, or C. Uh, second, two, number two here. Second battalion, second battalion, 31st infantry. One, cross vicinity, a uh, close vicinity operation objective, and and without de objective A. This is a uh, without delay. Let me see. Make sure I'm right here. Objective B, he's got here on this one. Okay. This, this looks like A here. So that must be a change. Number three is A. Oh, we have four there now here. Is third here? Okay here. Close Objective A. Okay, that's it. Objective A without the A. Prepare to attack to north on order. First, uh, first battalion, 31st infantry attached. C battery, 57th field artillery. Uh, to continue present present mission. That's the 31st infantry attached. C battery. There's C battery now. Yeah, that shows up in the deal report. The two yeah. deal report. So. Uh, E is a 57th Field Artillery Battalion attached to D Battery, 15th AAA minus B Battery, 31st Field Artillery <coughs> Battalion. Uh, one, Battery C attached to the 1st Battalion, 31st Infantry. Two, 57th Field Artillery Battalion minus direct support for uh, Regimental Combat Team 31 priority of fire to east and northeast. F, uh, the, the 30, 31st headquarters, uh, a heavy mortar company attached, 1st battalion, heavy mortar company, 32nd infantry, uh, direct support for regimental combat team 31, priority of fire to the east, uh, I guess northeast, and south, south, southeast. Uh, G, uh, 30, 31st Heavy uh, Tank Company, close vicinity opera, objective A without delay. Uh, prepare to attack to north on order. See, so that would be where. Uh, in other words, like Drake is standing by. Yeah. So you got a standing order. Uh, H is a uh, Company C, uh, 13th Engineering Battalion, attached thir uh, 31st. Okay. Uh, 31st. Uh, let me see what this clear copy is here. We're on H. Okay, uh, 30, maybe I ought to read from this one. Uh, th 30, 13th Engineering Battalion attached, 31st and AT and M Battalion, maintain main supply route in zone. Okay, uh, then I, I and R platoon, a reconnaissance east direction, Fusen Reservoir. That's Lieutenant Koch. And his two platoons by an R. You see, he's, he's still he's still supposed to be directed from the Fuchs and Reservoir. Yeah, but Muncie he, wanted Muncie. See, so that's 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 a mistake because we know he's over there. We've got three platoons of Muncie's one of Muncie stays behind if I remember right. Let's see, this is H. Oh, if everything's on here, where's H? 
right flank. Operation order H. some discrepancies here. Oh, H, here's H up here. Okay. Oh, the other... <clears throat> oh, you got more on the back here. Okay. H, I said H, Company C, 13th Engineering, attached, 31st, 31st AT, AT and M platoon, maintain main supply route, in zone. Okay, now here's the one. Okay, this is the one we want to straighten out there. Okay, uh, I. I and R platoon. Uh, recon, uh, recon, e, recon E direction, Fusen Reservoir. Well, you still got this on your. It's yeah, still on the other side now. Yeah, he's coming right out there. that. He's He's coming out of. Yeah, you're at the fusion. He, he's coming. He's coming out of here, heading towards the fusion. Yeah, what it's saying he's to fusion, but not. Yeah, but he's fusion. in that open area then. Yeah, he's up uh, open area in the mountains that are above, but he, he's right above that. So he takes out what four or five jeeps. Establish outpost. Establish outpost at, at RCTE right flank. Okay. Which he was hoping to do, but never got the opportunity. Yeah. I think one one jeep of guys came back from there. Yeah, so then he's got in here uh, on his. He's got the operating order added to. That, that's all the stuff about uh, taking precautions at night. You okay. know, rigidly and rigidly enforce necessary measures to conserve fuel, food, and fuel supplies for uh, export to exploit to maximum the superior capabilities of our troops and equipment. Five, provide convoy adequate security. Six, patrol aggressively and destroy enemy in zone. Seven, night movement limited to minimum essential. Four, A class one and two and three, RCT 31, uh, I don't know whether you're a tank or TMBIV, uh, Operation Overlay, Annex 1, Class B, 1st Marine Division, SP, uh, Operations Overlay, Annex 1, 5, CPs, RCT, C, Operation Overlap, Others Reports. Official by Lieutenant Colonel Barry K. Anderson, S3, and then McLean for Colonel. And that was up over 25 in its entirety. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, those, those are things that, uh, yeah, it's hard to read on this. Now that, that was supposed to be in play 8 o'clock 27th east side of the reservoir. Yeah, and of course this, this is the one that Ron pointed out again, he says, because this is, this is Drake's true copy. Okay. See, he, he wrote this 12 December 1950, and then that was uh, very fresh on his mind. Then, so so that was Drake, and then then you go into. Uh, well, I didn't I didn't post what Drake had said. I don't think you saw this. Tank company of this regiment departed Sagu Korea CT 2662 on 24th November arrived Pukchon. Korea, 25th November, and departed Pukchon, 26th November by rail, with destination Ham Hung, 70 miles. Company arrived Ham Hung, 26th November, departed Ham Hung, 27th November, traveling 60 miles to Hudong Ni, Korea, on the east side of Chosen Reservoir. On 28th November, tank company was given mission to attack north and open route to 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry Regiment. 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry Regiment. Attack commenced at 28, 
1000, November, with provisional composites platoon of headquarters company attached. Attack progressed as far as vicinity of medical company ambush. CV 5478 sufficient infantry was not available to hold this intermediate objective. Enemy forces estimated as one battalion well dug in. Numerous infantry casualties and loss of four tanks, two hit by rocket launchers, 3.5 rocket launchers, one rolled over steep incline and one with thrown track on steep incline and one with and one to withdraw. Wait a minute. Instead of I'll put this down where I can read it. Numerous infantry casualties and loss of four tanks, two hit by 3.5 rocket launchers, one rolled over steep, steep incline, and one with thrown track on steep incline, and one with thrown track, well, two of them with thrown tracks, and objective area, led to decision to withdraw. Two officers, ten enlisted men of tank company, were wounded in this action. Attack with the same mission was ordered the following day. Attack jumped off 290900 with 2nd, 3rd, and 4th platoons of tank company, with 1 platoon of C Company, 13th Engineer Battalion, Anti-Tank Mine Platoon, and Composite Platoon of Headquarters Company, 31st Infantry Regiment. That'd be Rasula, right? Yeah. All right. So, Attack again reached intermediate objectives and with each of two tank forces but overwhelming enemy numbers caused high infantry casualties and positions on objective became untenable. Understand order withdrawal of attacking forces to Hudong. Enemy forces estimated at two battalions well dug in. In the meantime one platoon of tank company was ordered on patrol mission to east of Hudong and then reconnaissance missions directly north to Hudong in select route through saddle and mountain area. Last operations resulted in loss of two tanks, death of one officer and two enlisted men of tank company wounded. At 3600 November, withdrawal from Hudong Ni to Hagaru CV 5272 was directed. Doesn't say who made that call though. No. This company performed rear guard action. Two disabled tanks were towed from Hudong for approximately one mile until further towing was impossible because of sharp turns en route. These two tanks were ordered to be abandoned by Lieutenant Colonel Anderson, acting CO at 31st RCT as they held up progress of the vehicle's column, then under heavy small arms fire. Company arrived at Hagaru, 3730, was attached to 1st Tank Battalion, 1st Marine Division, and immediately placed in the perimeter defense of Hagaru area, attacking Chinese forces that night directed at this company's sector. Attack was repulsed with some 100 counted enemy dead. Tank company sustained only one casualty. Attack was made by an estimated three companies of enemy. This is the first I've read this. On 3 December. That's when they're going to you know me towards Tokyo Pass. I can't make up this next word. 3 December embusted patrol to assist in the evacuation of survivors of 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, and 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry, and reopened approximately 30 wounded. Patrol mission was hampered by heavy small arms fire and small and, and anti-tank gunfire. Company, company was attacked, was attached to 8th Marine Regiment on 3 December 1950. Conducted patrol mission with Royal British Marine Detachment north on west shore of Chosen Reservoir to link up with the 7th 
and 5th Marines regiments were then withdrawn from Udomni to Hagaru. Patrol was ordered to return before mission was accomplished. Six casualties from entire from extreme cold were evacuated during period 3 to 6 December 1950, during which period company supplemented perimeter defense of Hagaru area. On 7 December, 1st Marine Division commenced evacuating Hagaru. This company was assigned mission of advance and rear guard of 5th Marine Regiment. Numerous engagements with enemy en route to Kotal Reef resulted in estimated 50 enemy dead action. With an estimate 50 enemy dead, actually resulted in three casualties in this company. During stopover in Kotal Reef, company was committed on perimeter defense. Departed Kotal Reef 10 1100 December and arrived at Serenity Ham Hung Korea 11 2300 December without serious incident. Robert B. Drake, Captain Armour, Commanding, True Copy, Fields A. Shelton, Captain Infantry, Enclosure B. No orders. Now, in theory, in theory, or in reality, they should have been on at Hudong on this map during that time frame. Although there's no time stamp, but well, yeah, it is 29 November. Up here at the top there, 29 November. Two knocked out tanks, second roadblock. But again, it does not show that. Uh, it does not show that there was a tank com company there or a CP or any of that nature on this map. Ray, do you recall whose map that is? Because uh, I think it's a little bit off to say the least. Now this is the perimeter of Hagaru before they supposedly before they arrive, 28, 29 December, November. Pulled that, I pull, pulled that from the net, but I think the wounding of faith is off on that. There's, there's a couple of things that I would question. But yeah, well, I'm looking at this. I'm still looking at this. Why? He's got this a second. Attack was made by on 2 December, where he would have been back conducted patrol to assist in the evacuation of survivors of 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, and 1st Battalion. On the 2nd. I think uh, Anderson's saying this never happened, though. That somebody was saying there was an attempt made on the second. Well, the second would have been too late, really. Well, the second, I thought they were going up, they were put under the uh, the British. Well, that's the third battalion. Let's see, yeah, that's a uh, patrol was hampered. Company was attached to the 5th Marine Regiment on 3 December 1950. That's when they conducted the patrol mission, well, that's when on the 3rd. But this part of the 2nd, now that would have been in the heat of battle early morning or in the afternoon. So in other words, the, the early to, on the 2nd of December, the 
It was gone. It was yeah, all over. The, the Hagaroon to I the west. That part that's of it. to the west, though. That's going up towards U Dam. That's not coming down out of Hudong. That's the way I read that. You covered approximately 20 wounded. You know, like they were trying to make their way up towards Fox Hill and got repulsed. No, well, well it's saying here, though, they, they uh, conducted patrol to assist in evacuation of uh, survivors of 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, and 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry, and recovered approximately 20 wounded. So that had to be behind East Hill, then? Yeah, at, at best, just barely going out. Because what does it say here? The, these two tanks were ordered uh, Company arrived 30, 1700, which is take two hours off, that'd be 1530. Well, 1530 would, well, no, 1700 would be add to, add to 125. That would be 550. 1700 should be 550. But you add two to there for 12 for noon was attached, so okay, the 30, that was attached to the 1st Marine Battalion, 1st Marine Division. So okay, so, so that's what I'm, I'm wondering with here, because see, then you got, he couldn't have went out to, on the 2nd, that was just trying to, so all he could do was we were scattered on the end of the column there. Sounds like it, sounds like it. But I think I got a place, I think I got a place where even, uh, uh, I got I got to bring up uh, when I get home. I got to bring up Anderson's deal because Ander I should have brought that along. Anderson is saying that he watched all this from the the, the, the plane that 57 spotter plane, and he said there was no rescue mission made. So how do you account for two different reports? Do you say that Anderson flew over when there was nothing going on? And that maybe well, the second, Drake had already made his sweep? Yeah, well, well second, uh, yeah, I'll see you second battalion. Because either way, the, the, the main thing is, the main thing you can't get around, though, is that it, at 30, 1700, 1730, in, in other words, uh, was attached to the 1st Battalion, 1st Marines, and immediately placed in the defense of the Hagaru area. Yeah, so either, either way, they're back at Hagaru at that night. Yeah. Either way, whether they went up the east side a little bit, past east side. Yeah. Or two east. Of yeah, them. well, the best they would have done if they did anything else, a survivor, so that's open. Conducted patrol to assist in the evacuation of survivors of the 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, and the 1st Battalion, 32nd, and recovered approximately 20 wounded. But it still doesn't matter, it's still operating out of Hagaru. Understood. Yeah, that's pretty good because he made that 12 December. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, this is what Ron's got. Now Ron was uh, Ron was wanting it to, to he said for Ames. See, and then we got like here, is that this is the one that uh, say a note. This was on 10, 10 March, 1951. It was supposed to be by the, it was supposed to be for historical, for history. And it says note, due to the action, due to the nature of the action of the 31st Regimental Combat Team, uh, in, 
in the vicinity of the Trojan Reservoir and subsequent uh, patrol uh, retrograde movement during which the records of the of the records and documents were lost or destroyed and many of the personnel became casualties a separate uh, command report to cover the the BCT uh, vicinity of Hagaru and BCT of the, the vicinity of Kotori for a period 1 through 13 December 1950 will be will be uh, provided. Okay. I mean, let's do this. Let's call this part one and take a break. We've been going at this a solid hour. Oh, okay. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this <laughs> is... Uh... And we'll get into part two here in a little bit. I need to stretch my legs here. Give you a chance to look that over and we'll pick up right from here, okay? Uh, Suitland, Maryland. The, the record groups include all of the unit records of the Army pertaining to the Korean War. Read that for me one more time, please. Aside from the official records, little exists in print of the subject of Chosen. The unit command reports and other records of the United States Army units that participated in the action east of Chosen are contained in Record Group 407 in the National Archives, Federal Records Center, Federal Building, Number 1, 420, 4205, Suitland Road, Suitland, Maryland. Okay. The record groups include all the unit records of the Army pertaining to the Korean War. For the units that fought east of Chosen, <clears throat> the circumstances that led to the tragedy are not documented in records or command reports. There are no records on deposit in the National Archives for the 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry, the 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry, or the 57th Field Artillery Battalion for the Chosen Reservoir Action in November 1950. I found none when I worked in the records there in 1974 and 75. Several years later, a request to the National Archives for a search of these records yielded the reply that the search had turned up no such records. And this is coming from Appleman. Probably none were ever, were ever prepared. All the units involved were part of the 7th Division. That's Appleman, what book? That, that's, uh, that's East of Chosen. East of Chosen. So and page, that's page, page 91. So the back so, of that? So then I got on the back here, I've got Escaping the Trap. Okay. Year 1990. Biological Notes, page 400. Only one chapter five outlines the CCF attack of the Chosen Reservoir in this book page 75 to 154, explaining the details east of the reservoir. Okay, so, so the big part is here. The marine volume makes no pretense of covering related Army activities in any detail, although its records do refer to them. Uh, this work is an important reference for any attempt to tell the story of 10th Corps in Northeast Korea. Yeah. To see what they did say was detrimental to us. Right. Like the tanks. In other words, that, that saying they didn't get through there. So it says, I co in other words, like I said my disclaimer, I, I cover these overlapping discrepancies as highlighted in this book with this disclaimer. I, do, I did not create these discrepancies. I merely, I merely highlight them in reference to correct the overlapping documentations between zones assigned and mission required to be seized by existing documents. See, so, so then I got here the Marine Plan of Attack. Okay. See, and that's the part here where I've got here. Uh, there, there are the Marines, uh, in other words, 
on no morning of 27 November called for the 1st Marine, 5th Marine Regiment to pass through the lines of the 7th Marines and lead the attack all the way to Mepyongni. There the 1st Marine Regiment will pass through the 5th Marines and take the road to the north and continue the advance to the Yellow River. The 7th Marine Regiment, meanwhile, would cover the rear of the 5th Regiment all the way back to Chosen Reservoir. All elements of the 10th Corps during this time will move up and take over the security of the main supply road from the reservoir back to Hung Now. Now I got here footnotes. Smith comments, Colonel S.L.A. S. Marshall, interview with Colonel Alpha L. Bowser, Jr., G3, 1st Marine Division, 2 January 1951, copy in author's possession, Montrose and Canzona, uh, The Chosen Campaign, page 151. Confirmation of that information. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then I then I go into, then I go into here. Okay, so so now, following this up, I'm going into. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Oh, I'm following this up. It's over here. It's in this one. It's following up on Rowe's book. Mm -hmm. Now Rowe, Rowe is. He was an S3, or, or an S, S2, which is intelligence officer for yes. the 7th Regiment, the 7th Marine Regiment. Okay, now this is one, this is one of, of four, one of five, where he wrote... What's the title? The, the, destruction, the destruction of the 31st Infantry, a tragedy of the Chosen Campaign, okay. by Patrick R. Rowe, May, Major, United States Marine Corps retired. Okay, so I'm going over here. On here's a, here's a map here, but here, here's where I'm getting into. Here's where I'm getting into what he was saying. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure it's in this first one. Okay. Here is where he's putting the outline of what I just wrote, wrote to you. Okay, problems arise. Okay, well here. Uh, uh, following, uh, okay, problems arise. Alman planned to launch an attack west on the morning of the 27th. Uh, completely, completely redeployment re for the attack would involve the movement of the following units. One battalion of the 7th Division would move from Oral Re to Chosen. One battalion. Uh, Two battalions of the 7th Division would move from the Pukchong uh, High Sinjan axis to Chosen. See, in other words, they're up there, you, they're moving them back. Yeah. You see where we're involved. Okay, the 5th Marines with attachments will move from east of the reservoir to Udomni. Okay, elements of the 3rd Infantry Division will relieve the 1st Marines at Chen Hung Ni and Koto Ri. Now get what I'm saying? Yeah. Is Smith has admitted in that change in, in uh, I think like 67 of, of the, the, the Chang in journal, which the sewer wrote, his line, his boundary line is north of a line just south of Hegaru. And now this is what and, and he, is confirms it. he is validating here. Rogue he, confirms okay, it. Elements of the 3rd Infantry Division would relieve the 1st Marines at Chen Hung Ni and Koto Ri. Now you can't relieve them because they won't move. <laughs> He's leaving a battalion of each one back there to the first. So, okay, so the next one. So okay, the 1st Marines with attachments will move from Chen Hung Ni and Koto Ri to Hagaru. And give the concentration that Smith had wanted all along, supposedly. What he's asked for and begged for, he yeah. got it. Alman gave him everything. So the 1st Marine Division post, command post, would move from Ham Hung to Hagaru. 10th Corps command post would move from Hung, Ham Hung to Hagaru. 
which would normally you want that the strongest effort. You got you got Smith moving up there, and you got uh, you got the Tenth Corps Command moving up there. Yeah. Wouldn't you think that would be the strongest, the strongest position? You nope. got two headquarters. You can't get more concentrated than that. In addition, in addition, there are the needs of the need to move supplies and ammunition to support all of those units moving to the chosen chosen area. Yeah. See, so. Uh, See, uh, we redeploying so many units over long distances required trucks the Corps did not have. Uh, a disposition of Corps units over a large, huge area has severely strained uh, transportation assets. To augment available transportation, 10th Corps had taken away two companies of the Marine 7th Marine Transport Battalion although that battalion had been mobilized and deployed by the Marine Corps to give the 1st Marine Division some parity with Army divisions of motor support. In addition, two provisional truck companies have been organized with vehicles and various Corps troops in a mobilized in Ham Hung. In Japan, some base units had been stripped of trucks, used contracted contracted Japanese transportation instead in order to augment transportation for both 10th Corps and 8th Army. Now see, that that's where I got in there, that I, I had this thing, like again, getting into what we were running with the Marine stuff. That's where I found this one. And I thought, where did I put that darn thing, you know? And I found the, I said, a comparison of the motor transportation available to an infantry division and a Marine, Marine Corps division, including the non-organic operations, uh, 7th, 7th Marine uh, Transport Battalion is as follows. Trucks, one quarter, truck, four by four, Army, 1,020, Marine Corps, 592. He said, they're not meant to move the men over land like, uh, you know, like the uh, trucks, yeah. three quarter ton and one, one half ton, ton uh, cargo. Army, 336. Marines, 63. Trucks, uh, two and a half ton, six by six cargo, 621. Marine Division, 436. A truck and, and they all had keys in their ignition. Oh yeah. <laughs> a truck, two and one half ton, <laughs> six by six, uh, SP or 120. So they they're one above us on that. They got 125. So they're talking about the transportation. But within this within this volume of work here from the Marines, they had said like uh, uh Martin Rush says there's 10,000 Marines back at the coast. And reserve. 10,000 of them back at the coast. So in here is the amphibious, the Amtraks, will substitute for truck drivers on bringing supplies up the road. Well, let's, let me be clear about something, though. If you've got 8,800 UDME, you got 10,000 in reserve at Hung Nam, the entire Marine Corps is 75,000 strong, but you got 25,000 at work. Slightly over, they're slightly over. They, every time you see it, they are reinforced. They always put Marine, 1st Marine Division reinforced. All right. So they're over 25,000. But only only 15,000 are Koto Re or yeah, higher. Yeah, say, say like maybe. Or I'm uh, sorry, even lower than that, because they were running. Uh, the so, major so figure, fluid, so, the MS so figure supportive, supportive with your artillery and your tanks and everything, say 5,000 per battalion. So, two, for, 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 to get 50, so basically 000. two battalions from Hagaru to you damn me, and then you got uh, yeah, at, Chesty at, Puller at, and his keys range. down at Kodo <laughs> with yeah, 5,000 more. Okay. And then but 10, I, in reserve. But then, then what got me was on on his, on his first page up here, 
I, could, I couldn't understand this. I said, I still don't understand it. In other words, uh, like you said, uh, Drake has the whole tank company up there. Yeah. He says, this is rare. Seldom, but he's got the whole regiment up there. He says, seldom would this happen. He's only got 22 tanks. And now I'm reading in this Marine stuff. It says, in other words, they've got 1,423 medium tanks. So I go, what's the difference here, you know? What would they need so many tanks for? I don't understand that stuff. Well, they really got them. <laughs> the first tank, the first tank battalion, uh, reveals a provisional tank platoon, a platoon, uh, during during the the morning, to, uh, what to moving to or uh, moving to to Chen Hung Ni, the provisional platoon. Uh, Moved, made up of 1,423 medium tanks uh, was formed to provisional see these things are see I tried to make it as dark to bring it out uh, support applicant support for the 5th and the 7th <coughs> the 7th Marines so between four, Murray and Litzenberg they've got a thousand tanks yeah uh, in where? In addition, it, it was it was felt that the relevance of 1,426 tanks on a narrow road being used uh, on the main supply road would be entire extremely hazardous under. Uh, under the something like servicing uh, commitments, oh, yeah, uh, no difficult nightmare. no difficulties were un encountered by the platoon in its uh, prevalence in its movement to Chen Hung Ni. I never heard of them being up there. And like I said, with Labrie, Labrie is uh, says you don't remember any of them being up there. And now it says back in here again that they will serve. They will serve as a supply going up the route to bring supplies up to them. As support for supplies. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's in here too. See, I got this mark where. See, but but here again, though, Ron is where I got here. Where next page tanks close at Hagaru. Thirty November, fifteen hundred hours. Just, just to make the point about the keys and the giggles, um, Chesty Puller said that the army was in such a hurry to get out of there that they had left the keys in the ignition of the army jeeps. Yeah, I, I got which a, have I, no keys. <laughs> I got, a, I got a book I picked up as the life of Chesty Puller, mm -hmm. and I said he said four times in that book that. Boy, some some of these guys ran and they left the motors running with the keys and the ignition. And I said, what <laughs> what army was he with? Yeah. I said, darn it! I said, I said, what on the day on June the twenty fifth, nineteen fifty? Our calendar this year is identical to it. Oh really? I was pulling. I was pulling from twelve to two. I had guard duty at the motor pool. Now, why do you have guards in the motor pool? Because you don't have any keys. Somebody could steal the truck. Anybody could drive away. And if he steals yeah. the truck, all you can get, that's why that darn number's so big on the hood. Yeah. <laughs> you grab the numbers, they get a helicopter, or get a plane, try to locate this thing. Right. And you're going to steal a big army truck? I said, God. And, and he kept saying four times. And, and we had that discussion on that, uh, that university I, I was with that on the discussions on the war. We kept doing that and that guy said, and finally the guy to run it, he says, the only time thing I knew that had a car, a keys, is a staff car. Because everything else, you had a, you had a, you had that cardboard or that leather or whatever that thing was made of for the doors for a, for a two and a half ton truck. Yeah. It canvas. It was a window. Cellulite put in it, you yeah. know. 
And there was no, uh, there's no top to it. It's got a canvas top. And I said, I, I don't understand where he got that. And then finally one guy said, well, the Marines had them. I said, well, okay, you say you had them. But I said, don't say that. You never stood, you never stood guard duty over a Marine Corps uh, transportation unit? No. <laughs> uh -huh. No, that one guy, his name was Stockton. I think he wrote some books or something, but he always thought, that guy was always after me. He says, I, I even told him, I said, because that guy was saying, he said, let's stick to Korea. So he come on, I says, well, I said, Harold, it was the name, I said, Harold, where are you going to take me today? <laughs> are, 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 we going, are, we going, are we going to Germany or uh, what kind of trip are we going to have today? Because <laughs> that guy was trying to keep us on target, you know. I said, yeah, but he said, and then, then he writes me, he said, Ray, I want to I wanna take this off, off of the thing and go directly with you. I said, no. I said, that's what this thing is for. We're talking about to let everybody know what we're talking about. You're, you're talking about the uh, Kent State? Yeah, yeah. Was it, was it Kent State? No, no, this is Kansas, Kansas State. Yeah. Kansas State uh, put together a, a, a quorum of guys to do interviews and, and discuss with each other yeah, the I events telling, of the I was Korean telling Bob, War. I said, I'm glad Bob dropped by. He dropped by my house, you know, Ron. He, he was talking, uh, Bob was passing uh, uh, Scott Air Force Base on his way out here. And I was asking, you know, I said, drop by the house. Well, he dropped by the house. I said, well, I want to get, I've got Oliver P. Smith's book, the book by uh, The Gentle Warrior, The Gentle Warrior, Oliver P. Smith. And this guy wrote the book. I said, well, in the first place, the title of his book means that you have to make the guy come out a gentle warrior. That's the cover of your book. That's the name of your book, you know. So anyway, I put in there, I put a, uh, I, got, I brought the book with me. And uh, the guy wrote me, and I put in there, I says, uh, a quote. I said, what, when he put out an oral history, he said, what these army jokers did when they got back to Hagaru, what these army jokers did was groan a little bit, mm -hmm. and they'd grab a, a stretcher and lay down on it, and then the corpsman would come on and load them on. So I wrote that to that guy. I said, I think it's kind of disrespectful him saying and the guy writes me back, I showed him the letter, I said, he writes me back, he says, he says, I want to tell you, he says, in getting this book together, I have uh, checked and reviewed thousands of documents, and I have never heard the word that you used, Army Jokers, that Smith said. He says, so give me your source for this quote. He said, I don't want hearsay. He said, I want an authentic source. I said, okay, I'll give you one. I said, go to the back of your book where you list the numbers of books you've checked. I said, go to Oral History of Donald Knox. And I said the name of the company, where it was, who it was. I said, go to page so-and-so. And, -so. <laughs> and, and it's, it's uh, like Poussin the Chosen, and it's certain quotes from people. Just a little quote. And I said, it starts out with, that's what Smith said. So he writes me back and says, well, I admit I was wrong. But you took it out of context. <laughs> he didn't mean it for everybody. That was still just the a few. Still well, the how do you know position. what he meant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, it says he said that. I don't know. You got your authentic quote. You got your authentic quote. <laughs> yeah, this was one of the 10,000 documents you researched. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is one, too, now to set me off with growth. <laughs> With Roe? This was what set me off, because I put it in the book. I, I quoted Army, reg, uh, Army regulations on this one. Uh, uh, leadership, he, he going, he's going into this whole thing. Uh, in extremists. In I, extremists. Think, I don't think we ever talked about this one. The eventual erosion of tactical integrity and, and tragic results for the wounded in the truck column. After the block of Hill 1221 had been broken, any function of chain of command ended. Had it remained intact, it would have been apparent 
it should have been apparent at the railroad trestle that further resistance was futile and the column was holded for good. As a matter of elementary compassion, the senior officer should have taken the opportunity to surrender the column and wounded. There is nothing whatsoever the Chinese could have done to the surrendered wounded that would have been any worse than that actually happened to them. It might have saved some of the senseless and, and random slaughter of wounded that did occur. Now he's talking about me. Right. And you're going to yeah, you're shot you're up going too. To surrender me. So I look up military justice. Any officer that encourages a unit to surrender, or their color, their colors or regiment, without proper authorization, shall be punished by a court martial as directed, right, or, okay. or and, and you know results as directed. And I put that in there under this quote. I said that's a serious matter. Yeah. Now, now here, here you're coming out. Two nights earlier, Marine Major John McLaughlin, a Marine, did exactly that when his position of the Drysdale Task Force was cut off, isolated, surrounded, and encumbered with a large number of wounded. McClellan could have gotten away himself. Instead, he chose to surrender on the agreement of the Chinese that they would take care of the wounded. So what's the last line? The Chinese reneged on their agreement and some of the lesser wounded, but some of the lesser wounded did, it, did manage to escape. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the graphics of that story too is Instead, he chose to surrender and the agreement on the agreement that the Chinese that would take care of, that, that, that would take care of the Money Chinese does. reneged on okay. their agreement. They agreed on their, their agreement. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> with faith dead, with faith dead, and Major Miller, his executive officer, in, incapacitated by wounds, the next senior man was Major Curtis. Major Curtis did not attempt to take command of what was left of the column. As, as it ground to a halt at Hudong, to, he left the column and made his way to Hegaru. Asked about it years later, Curtis, then a colonel, said he thought it was the senior man and that he should have assumed or attempted to assume command regardless of the consequences but said he would probably do the same thing in similar circumstances. He justified it by saying that the column was uh, moribund, but unable to resist. Ne neither he nor any other senior officer have ever admitted to considering the need to surrender and attempt to save the wounded. Well, like I said, they burned the trucks. Yeah. They're already burning the trucks with the wounded in them. So you would have surrendered to more of that? Probably not a good idea. Yeah, I took that. I said, I can't take offense to that. That that meant me. Right. That meant all the guys that come back. Because, but the thing was, see, Smith had no idea. He didn't want us back at Hager River. Because he was worried because when we got back, when he was flying us out, you and me crew had two days yet to get back to Hager Road which he had ordered them back from on the 28th. Yeah, you guys were already flying out. They still hadn't yeah, he started to know, move. He had no idea what condition they were going to be in when he got back. So we would just be excess baggage to in, him. In the way. And like, like you heard Grant say, he said, I believe the man, he didn't want us. He didn't want us. Almon didn't want responsibility well, either. Well, it was like, uh, like I put in with Almond. Almond had said, uh, like, uh, Walker, Walker wanted, the 5th Marines originally was the 1st Marine Brigade when they put them over there. Okay. And they were isolated, they said, well, they'll go over to Japan. Well, MacArthur said, I need everybody I get, put them over in Korea. 
Well, they did good. They were under Murray. They were under Murray. And he said they, they did all right. But then it came back and said, all right, it says, okay, we're going to land at, Cho at Incheon. So Walker says, I want the 1st Marine Brigade, to, in other words, to become the 5th Marine Regiment, I want them with me. Well, Walker says, I'm in danger here. I'm trying to hold on. I'm, I'm at the standard die line, almost pushed out of Pusan. He said, I cannot pull a unit out of my system. He said, I can't do it. Out of my perimeter. So, so then it comes up to, to, to MacArthur and says, Smith says, I'll have to call off running one of the beaches, like Green Beach or Blue Beach, if I don't have them. Mm -hmm. So Almond tells him, says, I'll give you the 32nd Regiment. And he says, I don't want them. They're 40% rocks. Yeah. I don't want them. I said, what kind of a commander will refuse troops? <laughs> You know, any troops on, on an invasion. Yeah. He said, I don't want them. So, and then when uh, Almond's answering him, he says, I finally, he finally came to his senses when I told him, I'll give you this regiment. Well, it says, what happened was the Marines, the Navy stepped in. And the Navy says, I've got a solution. He says, let's put the 17th Regiment of the 7th Division in floating reserve. We will rush them in wherever they're needed. In other words, if they're needed at Pusan, we'll rush them in there. If not, we'll rush them in at the Inchon Landing. They'll be the fell safe. But they will be in, they will be in floating reserve. Okay. And he said, finally, finally. Uh, but Smith didn't want them. You know, he just didn't. <laughs> well, didn't he say that? Uh, 50% of the Marines that he had wasn't prepared to do what they were doing. Yeah, I got a kick out of that. They said when he. When he left, uh, of course, of course, I know what that is. You know, I said I, I got enough sense to know that 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 I know, and Ron knows as long as he was been been in. As many many guys that go through basic training, that commander's got to say when you're graduating, you're the best ones ever. Best class ever. You know, man, this is the best ones ever. Or, you know. Just like they keep saying now, out of all this crap that we got, this six, going into 16 years of unending war, man, there's nothing, nothing stronger than the American, American military. We're down to one percent of our men using, and they don't know what they're doing with them, and they're just using them up. 16 years, there's no solution in hand. Right. Yeah, but I said, that's what, that's what Smith, now Smith, it says, because he was making the tour at the time, it says, in, I think in Indiana, he said there was a Marine Reserve outfit. And of course his speech to them was, he said, when I left Korea, he said 51% of my men were reservists. And he said, in my opinion, they were a better division than I brought to Korea. <laughs> Which is a stab. So that, that's the one we ended up with here until he left in, in April. That's the one we had to chosen. So I said, well, I almost have to agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any questions, Ron? Mm. I'm just kind of, I'm going to take a break right there. Okay. Call that part two. Take a nap.